الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك سبحانك اللهم لا نحسي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله خير النبي أرسله أرسله الله تعالى إلى العالم كله بشيرا ونذيرا اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد صلاة وسلاما دائمين لائقين بك منك إليه كما هو أهل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا أما بعد أوصيكم أيها المسلمون ونفسي المذنبة بتقوى الله تعالى To proceed after beginning in his glorious name and declaring his oneness and testifying to the messengerhood of the final last prophet sent to all mankind Sayyiduna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and sending salutations upon him and his companions and family and followers after praising him with a praise that he praised himself with or any other praise does not befit his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala we counsel my dear brothers and my dear sisters to have taqwa of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fear him and be cognizant of his presence privately and publicly, openly and secretly. And to revere the sha'air, the symbols and sacred signs of this religion. This beautiful day of Jumu'ah in this beautiful month of Ramadan. Seven days, this is our seventh day. A week has already passed. And with every breath, we are coming to its end and to our end. And coming to our end, the Prophet ﷺ was once asked, Ya Rasulullah, man akyas al-nas, O Messenger of God, who are the most intelligent of people? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answered, very interestingly, with the most intelligent of you are those who remember death often. Those who remember death often and who are most prepared for it. Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. وَوَزِنُوا أَعْمَالَكُمْ قَبْلَ أَنْ تُوزَنُوا He said, evaluate yourself. Evaluate your, or rather, take yourselves to account. Take yourselves to account before you are taken to account. And evaluate your works before they are evaluated. Take yourselves to account before you are taken to account. Evaluate your works before they are evaluated. So as long as you have a breath in you, this practice of muhasaba, of taking yourself to account, should be a regular practice. A practice that we do for our businesses, for something that is not coming with us into our akhirah. We're over concerned, perhaps some of us with our accounts, and hence those of you who are business minded, every year you have an audit, you have an accountant to evaluate and assess the business and how well it's doing. To see how much is coming in and how much is going out. To see, are we going bankrupt? Well, Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he is encouraging us to take ourselves to account and to evaluate ourselves. How could we not live this life and ask ourselves, certain questions, taking ourselves to account. 
<clears throat> when we think about the many blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us from guidance, from security, from shelter. When we, when we think about how many diseases, sicknesses, and afflictions that He has spared us from. Think about all of the blessings that you have within you. That of sight, of hearing, of speech, of intellect. That of working limbs. Were you to try to enumerate. If you were to try to count and enumerate the many blessings upon you, you could never encompass them. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Whatever blessing you have, it's from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. And how many of us have paid the bill for our sight and for our hearing? How many of us have paid the bill? We don't get a bill in the mail that if you stop paying for this blessing, we'll shut it down. But he continues to immerse you in his blessing, continues to show you many favors, and he does this for his khalq because he's Ar Rahman. He does this even for those who disbelieve. But he's Ar Rahim for you. The specific blessings of guidance and of beneficial knowledge and of taqwa and of gratitude and of hope in Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and fear in Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and the maqam of ihsan and iman and islam these are special blessings these are gifts that are specific <coughs> gifts from ar-Rahim these blessings we have to show gratitude for and if we take ourselves to account will we find ourselves bankrupt the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used this word bankrupt. He said, do you know who is bankrupt? <coughs> and they said, the one who has no dina. Nobody. He said, no, the one who is bankrupt is the one who has these great works of prayer, of giving, of zakah, of sadaqah, of had, <coughs> and so on and so forth. But they are resurrected on the day of judgment bankrupt because they slandered, they offended others. <coughs> They gossip. And so those hasanat in your account are now given to those that you have wronged. And you're resurrected with nothing. <laughs> Take yourselves to account before you are taken to account. Have you truly fulfilled the obligation of serving Him and worshiping Him subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many moments standing before Him Almighty that you were ghafid? That you were heedless, that you were insincere, that you were in the kitchen or at work while standing in his divine presence. But yet, he answers and he receives you. How many nights have passed where our Lord has a special manifestation of his mercy in the last third of the night and he calls upon his creation, are there any here who has a need that I might fulfill it? Anyone here present at this hour that needs to be forgiven for so that I may forgive her or him? How many nights have passed where our Lord was waiting for you to turn to him in repentance with a broken heart, asking him <coughs> to rectify your affair, to forgive your sin? How many times have we turned away from him looking for solutions in the khalq while forgetting a khalaq, the one who is near. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when my servants ask you, O oh Muhammad, they ask you, I am near. And I answer the call of whoever calls them. So let them answer my call. Let them answer my call. Have you answered his call? If we look at our accounts, are we, we look at our, we do an audit of our lives and we look at how much anxiety and struggle we made for our education, for our careers, for our mortgages, for our homes, for our devices, for our businesses, for our families, and so on and so forth. We look at all of the efforts that we've made there. And then we look at the efforts on the other side, for the other side, for the hereafter. 
Is it an equal struggle? Have we struggled equally? Just like we struggle for the things that have been guaranteed for us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the one thing that is not guaranteed for you is the akhir. Have we struggled for the thing that is not guaranteed for us? Our salvation? Or is it lopsided? Take yourselves to account. What was the purpose of your existence? Why are you here? You only get one chance. Is it not time that we turn to Him with hearts that are broken and asking Him in this blessed month of Ramadan, asking Him not for worldly things, but for things that are forever, things that will last. Is it not time that we live a life of purpose and of meaning and that we change our crooked ways? It is time. <coughs> because a merciful blessing has descended into this moment right here in Juma, now in Ramadan, in these first 10 days, days of mercy, days of forgiveness, days of being emancipated, days of going into your records and cleaning out all of those things that have been written against you. It is a time to turn to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and to forego the pleasures of this world for a greater pleasure. The meaning of the fast is taqwa. Kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ala al-lazina min qablikum la'allakum tattakoon. Fasting has been prescribed for you as it has been prescribed for those who came before you so that you may have taqwa. It's a practice. It's a spiritual practice of giving up your appetite, of feeling hunger and feeling thirst and turning away from things that distract you from him subhanahu wa ta'ala and from your return to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and to say that bayk Allahumma the bayk I'm here at your service I'm going to give up what I need to survive for a greater love for my love for you it's time for us to embrace the fast as a spiritual practice a spiritual practice that develops us in terms of our patience, in terms of our taqwa, in terms of our preparation for al akhir And there's a price for it. And if we do this and we do it well, imana wa ihtisaban. If we do it with faith, we do it with belief. If we do the practice of fasting, one fifth of your religion, fasting of Allah, with anticipation of having our records cleaned, what happens? فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانِ إِيمَانًا وَحْتِسَابًا نُبُهِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan with Iman and anticipating the reward, his or her sins are forgiven for entire Despair not. Many of us are bankrupt. Many of us, if we look at the rights that are owed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to the Qur'an, to the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to our mothers and fathers, if we look to the rights that are owed to our spouses and to our children and to the <coughs> neighborhood and to the mosque and to the community, we fall short. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rahim, he's ghafu, he's afu, innaka afu. <laughs> is the dua of the month. Oh Allah, you are the one who pardons. You are the one who pardons and who is most generous. So pardon us, Ya Pardon us, Ya The Prophet ﷺ said, had my ummah knew, if they knew what was in Ramadan, they would wish that Ramadan was the entire year. If Ramadan comes and we're not turning to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala with hearts that are yearning for Him and preparing to meet Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, then when are we going to turn to Him? If we don't acknowledge our shortcomings and acknowledge that we are running a deficit, if you're completely unaware of your books and that you're running a deficit and that you're bankrupt, perhaps you'll come to Tarawih with a puffed chest like you're something and give your sadaqah like you're something rather than coming like a humble servant in need of his mercy. Do you feel the need for his mercy? If you do, hani'a lakum. 
Congratulations, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the hearts that are broken. And if you have a broken heart that is in need of being repaired, of being forgiven, alhamdulillah, the glad tidings. <coughs> Tighten up the belt, roll up the sleeves, fast Ramadan. فَمَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانِ إِيمَانُ وَحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمًا مِنْ لَمْبِيًا Whoever stands it in its nights with iman and anticipating the mercy and reward from Allah, he or she will be forgiven for. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> قرارا لربوبيته وإغراما لمن جحد به وكفر وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم My dear brothers and sisters, this is a sermon not to despair but rather to understand our condition, to understand our فقر يا أيها الناس أنتم فقراء إلى الله to understand your faqr, your need. He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the human being must realize their need. Oh people, you are in need of God, and God is independent and praiseworthy. We are the ones who are in need, and our servitude and our practice and our rituals is to demonstrate our need, our faqr, our ubudiyya, our servitude to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. At every moment we are in need of his sustaining us. Come to the prayer as a servant. Come to the prayer as someone in need. Fast with hope and anticipation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this. He's boasting to his angels. Look at my young man and woman who have left their desires and appetites for me. They have not seen me. Allah. It is only the human being that can consciously fast and give up food and drink and other appetites out of choice. This is one of the karama of Bani Adam, of the believers in particular. It indeed is a, it's a miracle. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the nights and in the early mornings asking, for, asking him to forgive you and to pardon you and to pardon your loved ones. Ask him for guidance. Ask him for things that will last. Turn away from the dunya and yearn for the akhirah. If you come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a heart that is yearning for him, then he forgives you. Answer his call to the best of your ability. Don't just stand in fear, but stand in the prayer out of gratitude. Come to the prayer and stand feeling grateful, expressing your gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet وسلم, stood in the evening, in the mornings, before dawn, before Fajr, until his feet were swollen. Do you think he did it out of fear? He didn't do it out of fear. He knew the station with his Lord. He knew where he was going to end up. He did not fear the hellfire. He feared God Almighty. But why was he doing that act? Sayyidah Aisha asked. She said, Ya Rasulullah, you stand the entire evening, so the wee hours of Fajr, in prayer until your feet are swollen, and Allah has forgiven you of everything. He says, oh Aisha, should I not be a grateful servant? He's expressing his gratitude. Our rituals should be viewed with gratitude, gratefulness, and it should be the acts of a servant, someone in need, a grateful servant. Be grateful and be his servant, and you will find success, and he will forgive us, inshallah ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said your fasting and your standing. Allahumma taqabbal minna inna ka inta salim alayhi wa alayna inna ka inta salim Allahumma taqabbal minna siyamana wa qiyamana wa ruku'ana wa sujudana ya rabbil alameen. Allahumma inna ala dhikrik wa shukrik wa husna ibadatak wa la taj'alna ya mawla min ghafirin. Taj'alna min al-shakirin wa taj'alna min al-zakirin. والحقنا بذكرك الصالحين يا رب مراحم النور العالمين اللهم ارحم أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارحم أمة سيدنا محمد اللهم اشف مرضى أمة سيدنا محمد سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المسلمين